We thank you for our salvation in the name of Jesus. We are watching to God. Now that is your salvation in any other person, in any other name, give it under the heaven. Apart from the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who we have given unto our God, our God, and our God, for God, for our God, for our God, for our God, for
government. They don't make this money. Come and take dominion. Come and take control. Oh, with you in our mess, oh God. We shall never mess it, oh God. With you, oh your God. Oh my God. With your presence. With your anointing. With your power, oh God. It is us, oh God. Baby, the mess for us, oh God. As you never need your eyes, oh God. From the land of Egypt to the promised land. And then begin to tell your soul, God. If whatever they did, not this morning, we bind your presence, we bind your power, we bind your nothing to be ahead of us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Rock and tap, Lord, so so. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, she never Maraba. Yes, 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 for Yes, for our Your presence, oh God. Your presence, oh God. Where is your presence? Where is your power? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are praying once again, inviting the power of God, inviting the power of God, inviting the power of God, inviting the power of God. We need a fresh fire. We need a fresh fire. We need a fresh fire. And I'll be so bad. I don't need a fire yet. I don't need a fire yet. I don't need a fire yet. We are fighting for the God of God. On the day of Pentecost.
don't get response. Because you are not here. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, my Lord. Father, I bless you, my Lord. We give you your glory this morning. For your words, yes, oh my Lord. And it's good to give thanksgiving unto the Lord. This morning, oh God. What is man that you are mindful of him? That you love us so much. Love from the deep body of our hearts. We say, may your name be eternal. This morning, even as we are before your presence, we pray, oh God. We pray, oh God, that we shall receive the fire this morning. We pray, oh God, as your power and your anointing leaders, Father, let us be here.
Deputy Chairman here, Deputy Deacon here.
presence at all. Christ in you. Christ in you. Why don't you put your hands together for King Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. We have some great men and women of God in our midst. And I, I give it fits and appropriate to see this moment to introduce them to the church public. Hallelujah. We are blessed today. I will reserve the chair for now. Uh, we are blessed to have the, the wife of the regional. Regional head's wife is now amazed in the person of Mama Margaret. Let's put our hands together and then we will her. Hallelujah. Amen. You are also welcome. Hallelujah. Because we are gathered in the presence of eternity. With innumerable company of angels. He has connected with us. So be in tune with the Spirit. And I guarantee you that you will never go past this as you can. So whoever comes to this call, you will not go ever. Amen. You want to proceed with the program? You want to open the floor for testimonies. In the interest of time, please just go straight to the point. Hallelujah. I I I Say Say Amen. The floor is open for testimony. Amen. Amen. As and our family system, when your older brother passes on, you take care of business. So I took this, I adopted these children and cared for them. And God being so good, he had a, a boy, a son, so I was excited about that. You know what I'm You don't know what kind of a woman for college. The two went to Kali back home. The, the son went to take. The father supported the work. And the daughter also went to help. And you have no problem. Beloved. Our God is gracious. And you know, we are over here Kali to all. Over here, take a new year. Of course, all year, according to the year, now we use a big year of Ghana, but now we have four, two, three, five years for a year of Ghana. I am going to take school for four years without So I decided to bring him here. So I said, you know, I'm going to come and do your masters here. I to Ghana, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going Praise the Lord. And before I could go, then he has gotten his visa already. Now, over and over, as I call, 
University of uh, of Friday there, Buffalo, Mokoya. Next is a ten thousand cash at the market. And when they came, they had to go to Buffalo and eat it. The fees of about ten thousand on the spot. And right now, we did six weeks ago. And I'm just going to go to the real hospital. I said, yeah, I'm going to go to the real hospital. And why I'm going to go to the real hospital. I'm going to make another course as well. Hope you must ask me. He's so smart that he, you know, he got everything right. So I got the investors who called him to come and do the same thing. Our president said, make 38,000. And that one was more expensive. Let us see you, Chia. We have to pay. If you got yourself a bra, you don't say, I'll pay. When you are doing this, you will pay. 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 And I told him that I don't have the plans, but with the faith in God, go and you will definitely finish your school. You have a wrong boy. Now, only one of the professors have been catching up here because of the law. Because of the year war, but for the second world, you have to have a half scholarship. It's 80,000 is off your tuition. Praise God. And the last thing was those that when they put out the record, they are like, you know what, we're giving you half scholarship. If I got 80,000, it's a bit too young. And I have to pay the 18,000. For 18 months. Now, I need our friend. I said that professor is not a friend for him meeting. I'm going to tell you, 18,000 and up can. I'm buying so I'm fine. Praise God. And just yesterday, they called me and they are like, the 18,000 that is remaining, they are also taking that cost. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, assistant director to the professor, it was too long for. Oh, for research. Praise God. I will make sure you have a class. It's everyone to be a woman of seven hundred dollars. So he's going to be paid. Now we tell her that we can say, "Yeah, now we're poor." So we can tell you, "That's what we do at the moment." Oh, now we have a chance. Praise the Lord. It's a very good time. We can't ask for a chance. Then I'm going to say, "Now we're going to have to go and get a new one." This guy that we have. Come on, you're going to have to go to the store. Let's trust him. And we are going to share with him. Whatever he said, or said, and he gave my mama a very nice. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't even say that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do.
Oh, let me take our hands together as we walk
ne me kanyina ye yu amen enu ti kwo kunim dimu kwo nshiramu kwo anyanyamu kwo so bia woni me die sia na ma se saudi na ma ye wuye me nyanyam enka sakanya
I am the Lord, I am your God. Humble yourselves, for I will exalt you. Know that I am God. Humble yourself, humble yourself, and I will be your hope. Amen. The second one says, The maiden had no hope, but I, the Lord, set her apart, and now she is called blessed. Seclude yourselves, and I will give you a new name. The world will see you and give glory to my name. I am a God of my word. Amen. And God bless you. It's time for us to hear the engrafted word, the implanted word, the one and the only word that is not subject to change. For the splendor of the latter days, the glory of the latter days, shall be more glorious. Hallelujah. So as we bring the curtains down, I trust God that every blessing packaged for this convention is stamped to be released. So refuse to be distracted. Tighten your seatbelt. Because we are about to take off. We are blessed today. The man of God who is going to deliver the word of God. I, I love him so much. Before we came to New York, I heard many, many, many good testimonies about him. Overwhelming, impressive testimonies. In fact, to say, to say a humble man is understatement. And as the Samaritan woman said, we've not believed because of your reports. But now we believe because of what we've seen for ourselves. Indeed, he is lovable. If you need anything from him, and you ask him or you call him, the sense of agency and the alacrity that he will attach to it is mind blowing. Is somebody I believe who doesn't need introduction? But for the sake of protocol, church, help me to welcome to the podium our own father. He's the original head, the National Estate Committee Chair, in the person of Apostle, Doctor, John, Kwame, Abia. Oh, let's put our hands together as we receive the administration of our Father. For the sake of time, we will not do uh, interpretation. Our Papa, Mr. Kano, left and right in the chat. Hallelujah. Amen, Papa. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. May his name be praised forever. Give thanks to God for his mercies, his protection, his love, for giving us another year. Today is a birthday for everybody. Because Christmas has gone and come back again. So we need to celebrate. Not many people are still alive. But we still have hope 
that 2017 you will be alive. Amen. That's why hope is very, very important in life. Because if you, as you are sitting down, if you are thinking in your mind, or if you don't have hope that 2017, 2018, 19, 20, 20, you will be alive, I believe you will be so sad sitting here now. But because you have hope and believe in, in the word of God that whatever it is, you will grow and live another 50, 70, 100 years more. That's hope. And that help us to live peacefully on earth. When you go through the whole scriptures, you can see that it's based on hope. All the promises, the messages God gave to mankind, everything is based on hope. So without hope, you can't even read the Bible. But you can't even understand or follow through the verses of the Bible. And Yes. Once that hope disappears from your spirit, from your mind, then life becomes miserable. You walk around like someone who is going to die in the next two, three minutes or five seconds. So it's hope that keeps us moving. It's hope that even gives people assurance to continue to live the kind of lifestyle they are living now. It's hope. That has kept some people in their marriages. They believe that tomorrow things will change, things will turn around. It is hope that is keeping people to continue to be at the places where they continue to work. Hoping next year, next two years, next three years, things are going to change. So hope is very, very important. So our theme says hope is born. Hope is born. And in the whole and in the soul, they are one of us as you There are two kinds of hope that I'm going to be talking about this morning. We have the fulfilled hope and unfulfilled hope. Jidia, another in the soul, another in the soul, Abdom, Bra, Oh, yes, you Any Bra, or the Koro. So, two hope that I'll be talking about before I sit down. Let's read our theme and find out what the angels told the shepherds. Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 11. Or let's start from, and let's start from the beginning so we can get the picture well. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. At that time, it was a small world, so they call it the whole world. This census first took place while Quirinus was governing Syria. So all went to be registered everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, 
and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ, is born. Let the church say Amen. Amen. And this will be the sign of you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling cloth, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Amen. Amen. Now we are talking about Jesus who is now born in Bethlehem. And now because he was a promised son that God promised mankind that he will become a deliverer, a savior. Mankind had hope in what God told them. It started from the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned against God. We have a lot of youth. I want you to pay attention because of you that have taken my time to speak the language that I am not comfortable <laughs> speaking it. It's because of you. So pay attention and it will help the older people because once you speak good English for modern people, it goes across. Everybody will understand. So pay attention. Some of you don't know our belief. The way we do the things that we do. The way we talk, the way we talk. And that's why it is very important as you are growing as a youth, you will be able to grab some of these things so that you can build on your foundation and build it right. Starting from the Garden of Eden, when God created the heaven and earth, the Bible said he placed two people in a small garden. And that garden had everything, had fruits, vegetables, just name them. There were animals around, there were peace in that garden. Because there were no sin in that garden, they were all walking around freely, enjoying life freely, everybody was happy, every day they would be singing, they would be jumping, even including the animals, all of them were dancing every day. Until they broke the law of God. Because God told Adam and Eve that there is a tree in the middle of the garden. It is called the tree of good and evil. The day that you eat of this tree, you will die. And Adam and Eve did not obey God's instruction. And the Bible said they ate of that tree. And after they have eaten of that tree, the Bible said their eyes were open. Now they have moved from one area to another area in the spiritual realm. So now they realized that they were naked. So God said, let me go and visit my people. The two people I placed in the garden, let me go and visit them. And when he went over there, he saw that he couldn't find them. Adam and Eve were hiding because they have eaten of the tree that God said they should not eat of. So when, as they were hiding, God called them, said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, when I heard your voice, I was afraid. Now all of a sudden, man is afraid of God. Now man is running away from God. Someone who has been meeting God every morning, 
every afternoon, every evening. Now because he has sinned, now he is running away from God. And then that became a separation be between God and man. So since from that time, God said, I have to find a way to bring man to myself. If I don't do anything, man cannot help himself. Since he has started running out from me, even if I call him and force him to come to me, he will not be able to come because there's sin in his life. In order for man to be able to go to God freely, God has to get rid of sin that is in man. When there was no sin in man, man was able to communicate with God 24 hours. Oh God, oh God, when God is coming, they will go to hug God. They will embrace him. But now because there is sin in the garden now, in the spirit of man, now man is running away from God. So God said, I will find a way to bring man to myself. I did not go through all the arguments and all the things that they were saying, but when you go home, just read Genesis chapter 3. You will find the story there. When the serpent, the devil, went into the snake and used the snake, at that time, no animal was able to speak or to talk. But for some reason, the snake was able to speak like a human being and was able to have conversation with Eve. I mean, I know on television, when you watch a Disney World and watch all those cartoon network, almost all the animals talk. But in reality, if you buy a dog, or a puppet, or a cat, and put that cat in your house. And if you go outside and come home, and then that dog meets you, and doesn't bark, hop, hop, or doesn't shake the tail, and then starts saying, hello dear, how are you? You would better run away from the house. Right there is the devil. The cat saying hello to you. In trouble. But here for some reason, Eve was not afraid and listening to the devil, listening to the snake. And the snake said, Ah, what are you doing here? You, you standing under this tree? Did God say nobody should eat of this tree? Don't you know that God is lying to you? The day that you eat of this tree, you will be like God. That's what God said, don't eat of it. The Bible said Eve believed in the devil, ate of the tree, and gave some to the husband. The husband did not ask any question, and they both ate the tree. So when God came, he said, Eve. I mean, he asked Adam, Adam, what have you done? He said, the woman that you brought to me. Woman, why did you do that? In the snake, a serpent. Who lied to me? Because snakes has no soul, has no spirit, God don't have to waste time to ask snake any questions. As a matter of fact, they were not in charge of the garden. The whole garden was given to mankind to take care of everything, including the snake. But here, God, man has allowed the snake to lie to them. So God said, Adam, since you have done this, you are going to suffer. This is a basic teaching that every believer needs to remind yourself. The word of God, even the basic ones, are the most important ones that will help you to ground your salvation. The day that you eat, since you have eaten this tree, Adam, you are going to suffer. You are going to work very hard before you eat. From this day forward, now this green grass you see very nice, they are going to turn to be chunks. When you step on it, they're going to pinch you. If you don't take care, some of these things are going to kill you. Some of these animals you see around them playing with, 
They are going to be your enemies. They are going to bite you. When they see you, they will eat you alive. Because sin has entered. And you have to protect yourself. Either you give yourself to me, or you live the way you want. I just paraphrase it. If, since you did listen to the devil and have caused this trouble, in your childbearing, you are going to suffer for nine months. We don't know if women were going to just conceive for just one month, one week, and give child. We don't know. But from that time, God said, nine months, you are going to cry. So maybe human beings were, the women were going to have this childbirth maybe for uh, uh, three days. Then you have your child. No problem. But here sin has come. So God said, you have to go through. So every day, even that child who doesn't know nothing, once in a while you kick you, boom, 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 in your stomach. So that you know what you have done. Then, the devil, what you have done, from this day forward, you are not going to have no arms or hands to walk, no legs to walk, no hands to touch anything. You are going to crawl on the ground. You are going to crawl off your belly. And since from that time, it has been like that. But I am giving you a promise, Adam and Eve. This snake, this animal, which has destroyed your peace and brought this calamity to you, I am going to send someone, a savior. He is going to be a man. He is going to be born in Bethlehem. He is going to come to this world and he is going to kill this snake for you. He is going to step on the head of this snake for you. So God made that promise right in Genesis. So it became a hope for every human being that one day this snake who has captured us, who is tormenting us, who is...